All right, so now we're gonna do some clinical reasoning here. And so I have Pat here, he's got some normal motion, but we're gonna play this kind of devil's advocate here. Um, so, you know, the biggest things that I use are um, extension, <clears throat> side bending, and rotation for the most part. So usually you'll find people are lacking more extension or down glide, at least that's what I've seen clinically. So as we discussed in a previous video, when you rotate right, you're gonna get a down glide to the right and an up and forward glide um, on the left of the mid cervical spine. So for instance, say he was lacking motion to the right. So we could either say that he's lacking in glide up and forward on the left or down glide back into the right. So you can also postulate or rule that out potentially by having him extend his cervical spine because when you extend, you've got the same exact mechanics. So theoretically, if he's lacking motion and extension and down glide, he will be lacking it in extension and in right rotation. So then I'd have him extend, and if that's okay, then I'm probably not thinking mid cervical spine. He could possibly be limited at the subcranial spine, which was at the atlas and axis where the majority of motion occurs. Similarly, I could also do side bending this way, because side bending to the right would be um, the same exact mechanics of the rotation of a down glide down and back. So that's how you can really kind of rule in and rule out. So another thing you want to take into consideration when looking at the movement of your patient when you're evaluating the cervical spine is just like we did in the first example of a down glide on the right side is when they can't down glide, they'll compensate in specific ways. So for instance, if I am going to extend my neck and I don't have motion a down glide on the right, I'm going to kind of look back and to the left a little bit because I can't down glide on the right. So similarly, when I rotate right, I won't be able to rotate as far or will I be able to side bend. So those are just some compensations you want to consider when evaluating your patient's movement. All right, so now what we're going to do is apply this with side bending and so with that down glide. Um, so for instance, let's just say that he was rotate, if Pat had normal motion to the right he had normal motion extending, but then when he would try to go this way, he just wasn't getting as far, right? So you're probably thinking more tightness on this side relative because he was able to up glide and hit full motion this way on the left, right? He was able to down glide on the right. He was then able to extend back, so he's able to down glide back, so you know that's not a problem. Um, and then when he goes to side bend, he just gets hung up, right? So you're probably thinking in this case, more soft tissue tightness here. And obviously you can check this stuff passively as well, um, get a better understanding. So that's just some clinical ways you can really discern, you know, what they really need as far as your patient's treatment goes.